Sometimes, as a physicist, I do feel a little like a magician. But I'm cheating, right? I'm actually using physics. Or am I? This is an aluminum can. This is a plastic wad. Plastic is PVC. And this is a pullover made of wool. But it's pretty neat, don't you think? A plate. Some water. Bubble soap. PVC wad and my pullover, made of wool. Look at the magic. I'm controlling the bubble. I'm the master of the bubble. I can even change the shape of the bubble, but I need to be careful not to pop it. Pop. looks like magic. It's physics. You see, all matter is made of three particles. Neutrons, protons and electrons. Neutrons, as their name suggests, are electrically neutral. Protons carry a positive charge. And electrons carry a negative charge. How are these particles organized? As atoms. You've got in an atom a nuclei which contains neutrons and protons. And around the nuclei you have electrons. The number of electrons and number of protons is the same in an atom. Therefore, the charge of the atom is zero. Atoms are neutral. These atoms organize themselves as molecules. For example, the water molecule, one hydrogen, one oxygen, and another hydrogen. The atoms being neutral, the molecules are also neutral. Let's look now at a block of matter. It contains atoms, molecules, therefore some neutrons, some protons, and some electrons. The block of matter will be neutral because the molecules and the atoms are neutral, so the whole block is neutral. This block can be anything. It can be uh, this board, it could be this pen, it could be my finger, whatever. We can consider another block. It will also be made of neutrons, electrons and protons. But these in this block will be organized differently. You have different atoms, different molecules, therefore different properties for the material. For example, this block would have as a property the fact that it can take some extra electrons. It actually enjoys taking extra electrons. While this block would be more kind of, I want to get rid of some. So if you place them in contact, 
and rub them against each other, some electrons might transfer. This is called the triboelectric effect. And now if you separate them, after having rubbed them together, the red material will have an extra amount of electrons. So it will be negatively charged. While this one will have a default of electrons, therefore there will be more protons than electrons, so it will be positively charged. Consider these two materials. The pullover would be the blue thing, and the red thing would be the PVC rod. And when I rub them together, like this, I'm actually transferring some electrons from the pullover to the rod. This is the status of the rod now. It has negative charges accumulated at the extremity that are rubbed against the pullover. PVC is an electrical insulator. That means electrons cannot move around PVC. They are kind of stuck there. So, for example, if I took an electron here by rubbing the pullover at this point, the electron arrived there, then the electron is stuck there. Therefore, the charges here are localized at this point. They cannot move. Let's look now at the aluminum can. I represented it here, seen from the bottom. So you can see actually a cylinder of aluminum. Aluminum is a metal, and the metal is an electric conductor. That means that electrons can move around the metallic cylinder. A metal is also, like any other material, neutral electrically. Therefore, there are as many protons than there are electrons. There are as many positive charges that there are negative charges. So I can represent the positive charges. And as many negative charges, which are dispersed uniformly inside the material. Suppose that I approach a negatively charged rod. The electrons can move around the metal. Therefore, they will move around, repelled by these negative charges. They will move away. So, the positive charges, they can't move. Because the positive charges are carried by the nuclei of the atoms that form the structure of the material. But still, you will have an accumulation of negative charges this way, and you will have a default of negative charges that way that corresponds to a positive charge in the end. So I can remove this and just replace by a big minus here and a big plus there. The aluminum can has become an electric dipole. Okay, so we have our rod there and we have the negative charges there. Negative and negative repel each other so there will be a repulsive force like this. But you also know that negative and positive charges attract each other. Therefore, there will be an attractive force like this. There are two forces going on, one attractive, one repulsive. These forces are called Coulomb forces. And it can be written like this. When you have two charges, Q1 and Q2, at a distance d from each other, the force between them is proportional, k is a constant, to the product of the two charges, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Don't be frightened by the formula. What's important here is that the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, meaning that further away the two charges, smaller the force. So you realize that the attractive force will be stronger than the repulsive one, because the positive charges are closer to the rod than the negative ones. And that's why the, the can will follow the rod. You might argue that the can is not moving like this, it's actually rolling. That's not a problem. Because remember that the electrons can move in the metal, therefore they'll try to find the point which is further away from the negatively charged rod, and they'll be rolling too. So that this configuration always stays the same when the rod is around.
What about the soap bubble? We saw that the soap bubble was following the negatively charged rod like the can was. What is a soap bubble anyway? I represented one here. This is a layer of water. And at the interface between the air and the water, there is another layer called a surfactant layer. It's a soap, basically. What we're interested here will be actually the water layer. Because it's not pure water here, it's just tap water. In tap water, there are some impurities. These impurities are charged. Think about atoms, right? I told you that atoms were neutral. But if you remove an electron or add an electron to one of these atoms, they become charged. They are not atoms anymore, they become ions. Take the sodium atom. If I take away an electron from the sodium atom, there will be one extra proton compared to the number of electrons. Therefore, it will be positively charged. Take the chlorine atom. If I add one electron to the chlorine atom, there will be one extra electron, therefore one extra negative charge, it will be negatively charged. These are ions, and tap water is full of them. Ions can move in the water as they want, like electrons in a metal. So if I approach a negatively charged bar here, the sodium ions are going to want to move closer to the bar because they are positively charged. Oops. <laughs> and the chlorine atoms will want to move away. Do you recognize the situation? It's like with the can. Here you will have an attractive force between the negatives and the positives. And here, a repulsive force between the negatives. But because the positive charges are closer to the negative ones of the bar, the attractive force will be bigger than the repulsive one. Therefore, as a whole, the bubble will follow the negatively charged rod. The definition of magic is the power of apparently influencing events by using mysterious or supernatural forces. The key word here is apparently. Instead of using a supernatural force, we have been using a natural force, Coulomb's electric force. So in the end, we can say that physics is magic. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, like it. It really helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more cool physics videos. In the meantime, I do have to say goodbye, so I hope to see you soon for another episode of Physics Made Easy. This time the balloon is attracted by my hand. Let's put two balloons. <coughs> and make a kind of balloon wall. charge both. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just having fun with it. Actually what would be really cool, if you also try to come up with some new ideas you could use, uh, of how you could use uh, electrostatic. You see this balloon gets stuck on the metal. Yes, it's a metal bar. So I gave it negative charges, so the negative charges got pulled away in the metal, it's got a positive charge on this side, Therefore, the balloon is attracted to it and sticks to it. Yeah, the negative charges are further away from the negative charge of the balloon than the positive ones in the metal, you know? But let's try to see if I can pull it away. I don't know if it's going to work. No, it doesn't want to. Hey, you saw? I managed to unstick it. Okay. You see, you can have a lot of fun with these things. Oh, here, yeah, this one now is... Uh, good. <laughs> okay, have lots of fun with it, and see you next time.